Coming up on Hands on iOS, a new update is available. So let's talk about how to download it and get it loaded on your iPhone. Hands on iOS is brought to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? Well, LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether employees are working in the office or remotely. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Hands on iOS is brought to you by Raycon. Raycon's wireless earbuds are perfect for listening to audiobooks, music, or podcasts. Go to buyraycon.com slash HOI and get 15% off your first order. Folks, iOS 14 is finally here, and that means it's time to go around and install it on iPhones, on iPads, etc. If you, like me, are a little impatient and don't want to wait for the point updates, meaning you don't want to wait for uh, 14.1, 14.2, you just want to get the thing now that it's available. So I thought it'd be a good idea to talk about how you go about doing that the right way so that you can make sure that the installation goes as you expect it to and that you don't run into any issues. So let's talk about where we start. The first thing that you're going to do is back up your device. So let's take a look. Okay, so you can see I have launched the settings app on my iPhone. That's because that's where you want to start things. So you're going to need to create a backup of your device before you start any kind of software update. So we start that by tapping on our name at the top of settings, choosing iCloud, and scrolling down until we get to iCloud Backup. Once we get to iCloud Backup, it is as simple as choosing the Backup Now button. This will back up your iPhone to the cloud. So you can see that my phone was last successfully backed up at 2.43 p.m. Your phone will automatically back up your device as long as it is connected to power, and connected to Wi-Fi and the screen is locked. So you should have that happen usually overnight is when people will get their backups. But you can make these happen automatically. As long as you have the uh, storage space in your online iCloud account, you can make them happen automatically by choosing to toggle on that iCloud backup button. But if not, you could tap on backup now and that would start the backup. You wait for it to finish and then you're ready to go. But let's talk about if you don't want to do things from your iPhone and instead you want to do a different kind of backup or you don't have the storage space to do the backup on your actual device and therefore you need to do it uh, in a different place. Well, that is going to involve another option and that is going to require you to have a computer. So. Let's talk a little bit about backups before we get there. So first thing to note and, and to, to kind of understand is that there are different types of backups. There are uh, full entire encrypted backups, and those are ones that you do from your computer. And then there are the backups that typically go to iCloud. Instead of creating a backup of every single little bit of your data to iCloud, Apple essentially takes the most important information as well as kind of a an outline of what you have stored on your phone. So the apps don't need to be stored in the backup, but instead Apple can just keep a list of those apps. And that way, when you go to install things on your new phone or update your phone, then those apps can still be there and be ready to roll. Sometimes you run into an issue with storage space and things like that, so there may be a better way for you to uh, go about backing up your device. So let's take a look at that. All right, so you can see here I have my Finder window. And within my Finder window, you can see that I have chosen the, uh, the iPhone in the left-hand sidebar. So in this case, the iPhone's name is just iPhone. So I've chosen that iPhone, and you've got all the information here about that iPhone. And under backups is the section that you wanna be paying attention to. So right now, I have it selected to back up your most important data on your iPhone to iCloud. That means that it's going to continue doing what it does on the phone, as opposed to the experience that you have here on the Mac. If I were to change this to back up all of the data on your iPhone to this Mac, then 
it would stop backing up to iCloud and would instead back up to your Mac. And that means it's going to pull more information to the device as opposed to just having the small amount of information that it backs up to iCloud. Now, what if you want to make sure that every single little bit of information that is on your iPhone is stored somewhere? Well, that is where the encrypted local backup comes into play. This option allows you to create an encrypted storage of your iPhone, meaning that it will include kind of the whole image of what's on your iPhone. Everything that's on your iPhone will be stored in a file that is then able to be sort of re-dropped onto your iPhone, your iPad, whatever, whenever it comes time to do an update. So it's kind of a choice of what is most important to you. Are you looking to have uh, simply the the quickest and easiest backup where your messages are going to be fine, your uh, notes and all those kinds of things are going to be fine, your photos will be fine, they're already backed up to the cloud, etc. But the little individual bits of information like your apps and things like that, those you'll just have to wait to re-download uh, if you run into an issue and need to get your backup. So that's kind of what makes the difference on what kind of backup you do. If you're looking for a personal recommendation, I suggest using iCloud Backup as your main backup way, but every once in a while going and creating an encrypted backup of your device, particularly if you're like me and you play around with the beta software, you want to have an encrypted backup of your device. So that way the whole entire kit and caboodle can be put right back onto your iPhone, iPad, etc. when the time comes. This episode of Hands on iOS is brought to you by Raycon. When listening to podcasts and music I love, the best way is with a pair of premium wireless earbuds from Raycon. Raycon's newest model, the Everyday E25 earbuds, are their best ones yet. You get six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, more compact design, and a noise isolating fit. I personally love the fact that you get so many different ear tips in the package, and that's why I recommend them. For a limited time, get 50 15% off your order at buyraycon.com slash HOI. That's buyraycon.com slash HOI for a special 15% discount on Raycon wireless earbuds. Make sure to check it out now while the deal's running. Buyraycon.com slash HOI. So now you've gone and done the thing. You have went in and backed up your device, and that means it's time to install the new version of iOS. Well, just as there were two versions, two ways, uh, two main ways to back up your device, there are two ways to, in to install the update. The first one is right from your device. So we'll switch back over and we go to the settings app. We scroll down to general and then we tap on software update. iOS will check for a software update and then it will pop up and you just choose download and install and follow through all of the steps. Now you can see here, I have a thing that says customize automatic updates. Right now, my phone automatically overnight installs new updates. So you may have this setting turned on, meaning that you're gonna wake up tomorrow with iOS 14 ready and rolling on your device. But I'm gonna go ahead and choose customize automatic updates. And you can see here that these are the settings that you have, download iOS updates and install iOS updates. So you can have your phone go ahead and download the update but then you are the one who goes in and says, okay, now install it. If you don't want to have that, then you simply turn on both of those and that way it will both download updates and install them overnight. In fact, Apple says your iPhone must be charging and connected to Wi-Fi to complete the update. So again, typically that's going to be something that happens overnight. Now, an issue that many people run in to is the issue of space. They download the, or they start to download the iOS update to their device. And actually, let me switch back here. You can see in the top left corner there, it says 2.84 gigabytes. That's quite a bit of space if you've got a smaller sized iPhone that you've got lots of photos, lots of music, etc. on. And in that case, you don't really have the space to download 2.84 gigabytes of a new version of iOS. So what do you do? Well, that is where the second type of update comes in. 
if you don't have the space on your device, Apple has introduced a process where it will actually take some of the apps that are on your device and temporarily remove them to make space for the iOS update. And then once the new version of iOS is installed, it will reinstall those apps and you'll have that. But if you don't wanna mess around with that, if that makes you concerned, you're worried, then there is another option. Again, we have to plug our iPhone into our computer, as I have done here, and let's go check it out. Back in the Finder menu, we've done our backups, everything's been backed up as it needed to be. Now it's time to check out the uh, the rest of the options. And you can see up here, software. The current version is iOS 13.7. Simply clicking check for update here, we'll check for a new version of iOS. It will say, oh, iOS 14 is available. Would you like to download it and update your iPhone now? And in this case, it will be downloaded to your Mac instead of your iPhone and then installed that way. So this is a great way, if you don't have space on your iOS device, to go ahead and install the update using your computer kind of as the go-between so that it can take care of all of the the downloading and the storage while your iPhone just gets the new update of iOS. I'm gonna go ahead and click cancel there. Sometimes you might run into an issue where you can't uh, get the download to start. For some reason, it's not downloading and installing. Well, it's a very, uh, there, there are a couple steps that you can take. The first one and your first line of defense is the force quit option. If I swipe up from the bottom to en enter multitasking mode, I can then swipe up on the settings app to force quit it, tap on the bottom to just go back to my main screen, tap settings again, go into general, go into software updates, and then try again. If you run into an issue where that doesn't solve it for you, uh, Apple suggests that you try a different Wi-Fi network. It also suggests that if it, it should, it should work just fine on a, on a, on a virtual private network or a proxy uh, system. But if for some reason you're running into an issue, consider toggling off your virtual private network or uh, leaving that proxy and just connecting to uh, a Wi-Fi network normally. And in those cases, you should be able to download the software. Of course, uh, if for some reason on your iOS device, it simply won't work, then going to your Mac, your, you know, your computer, plugging it in and doing the download and install process there is also very helpful. And if none of that works, then you can try force restarting or just simply restarting your iOS device. Uh, modern iOS devices, you simply hit the top volume button, then the bottom volume button, and then you hold down the sleep wake button. And it, it won't show it because I'm currently plugged into this software that is showing the screen. But once you do that, uh, you hold down the sleep wake button and then the power off button or swipe screen comes on and keep holding down that sidebar button until the screen turns black and then keep holding down the button until the Apple logo appears in the middle of the screen. At that point, your phone will be restarting. You can let go of that side button uh, and then your phone will be ready to roll. Folks, I want to thank you for tuning in to another episode of Hands on iOS. I hope that was helpful and informative and that you are well on your way to getting iOS 14 and all that it has to offer. If you have questions, if you run into issues, if you have anything else, of course, you can send that my way. It's hands on iOS at twit.tv. And folks, please do subscribe to the show. You can do that by going to twit.tv slash H O I or going to youtube.com slash hands on iOS, clicking the subscribe button, liking this video, and ringing the bell if you wanna get this episode as soon as it's available. Until next time, I've been Micah Sargent, and this has been Hands on iOS. Goodbye. I'm Jason Howell, host of Tech News Weekly here on twit.tv, along with my co-host, Micah Sargent. Each and every week, we talk to people who are making and breaking the tech news. It could be journalists writing amazing tech stories. It could be experts. It could be the sources of the stories themselves, developers, you name it. We bring them onto the show, and we talk to them about why their story is resonating with the world. You can watch and subscribe by going to twit.tv slash TNW. Make sure you do that and you won't miss a single episode. We'll see you there.